I wanted to thank you all for joining the webinar uh, on the impact of cloud computing on the, the new reality in which we find ourselves. I'm working from home and have been since mid-March. I'm sure the majority of you have probably been doing the same thing. In this webinar, we're planning to share a little bit about who we CPR is, uh, review some facts and trends on ex what experts like Gardner Group, Salesforce, and InfoWeek have reported, and at that point, really the reason why we want to have this seminar, uh, I will introduce you to two of our clients that have gone through the transition to the cloud. And they can tell you how, uh, how this has affected them. We have some questions to keep the conversation going with them. And then, uh, then finally, we'll open it up to, to the floor to you, uh, the attendees, to see if you have questions for CTR, Chris, or Hardeep. Uh, for the sake of time, though, we're uh, and continuity, we will not be answering questions as we go. But if you have questions, we would truly appreciate you putting them into the Q&A. Uh, my uh, Dave Conmula will be actually monitoring uh, the uh, chat, the Q&A area, and we will dis discuss those questions you have at the end. We're, we plan to leave time at the end of the session to make sure that we cover everything. Uh, my name is Dick Kenny. Uh, I've been in public accounting. I went to public accounting straight out of college. Uh, my first job was confirming balances on a large computer printout, a very, very uh, rewarding job. But I got really good at a calculator as a result of that. Um, for the most part, computer systems back in those days, they were COBOL or Fortran applications that very few people, at least on the functional side, understood. Uh, in addition, there were massive T1 trunks uh, where uh, where it was necessary to uh, between facilities so that we could communicate. Uh, now, of course, it's, it's a totally different game. We can generate financial statements, approve POs, and enter transactions from iPhones, PCs, tablets. That those are just some of the benefits of cloud computing. Uh, they, these are definitely interesting times. So, uh, you're, so who is CTR? Um, as you can see on there. Uh, we have, um, and why you should be listening to us. CTR has been a business, consult business consulting and technology space for over 20 years. We've seen just about every configuration and combination of systems imaginable. Our consultants have over 15 years of experience in working with and supporting business applications, such as ERPs, uh, you know, for example, uh, Oracle ERP Cloud and NetSuite, as well as e-commerce and business intelligence software. We have functional development and infrastructure employees located around the globe to support our, our employee, our customer base. One of the things I wanted to mention most about you that we're most proud of is that we have 100% client retention and referenceable uh, base. Uh, we, we take great pride in maintaining, our, maintaining that, that uh, status. Okay. Um, here are some industries that industry verticals that we've worked with during our, our time in business. We have a strong focus on business, best business practices. So not only do you get the technical expertise that you need, but we can also make sure that best practices are sewn into your business systems and processes. We firmly believe that the key of laying a foundation for business growth is standardizing where you can, while extending your system to take advantage of your core competencies. To do this, we have a strong, we have strong in industry and application experience. We feel we can offer you both the, the ability to stay standard when you can and extend when you have to. So, so some facts and figures. Um, don't just take our word for, growth, for the growth of cloud computing. According to industry leading market research firms, the working remote trend is growing quickly and not just because of the current stay at home deadlines. Most of this information presented here in this seminar uh, was reported well before the pandemic. I do, however, think that the current situation has accelerated the need for safer, more flexible, and more widespread solutions. For example, on the research, Gartner Group research shows that 54% of HR leaders indicated that poor technology and or infrastructure is the biggest barrier to effective remote working. And more research shows that by 2030, the demand for remote work will be increased by 
30% due to Gen Z employees entering the workforce. Lastly, 64% of employees polled uh, say that they could work anywhere and remote work policies are common in their organizations. Again, more numbers drive home the point that more and more companies are looking for ways to leverage their benefits of remote work and that their employees and potential employees are buying into this trend as well. You can see the steady flow of over five, 10 and 20 and 12 years, how the, the desire to work remote is growing. Here are some facts and figures on the impact of cloud technology put forth by some industry leaders in their space. I think you will hear some of the same findings reflected in the panelist response later in this webinar. Nearly half of IT execs surveyed by Salesforce said that they plan to invest in or improve their cloud disaster recovery solutions. The effort to create and maintain a disaster recovery solution is greatly reduced when using cloud applications. Okay, that was just kind of an intro into why we're having this session and why we've asked uh, Chris and Hardeep to, to attend. Uh, um, I'm not seeing one of our panelists as actually being here. I think he had some, I think he had some production issues come up. So he, he may or may not, he may not be able to make it for this session. But we do have Chris Soto, who is the Chief Technology Officer for uh, Wailopo, uh, which is, uh, uh, Chris can actually introduce himself and explain his product a little better than I can. But uh, I've known Chris for many years. Uh, we've worked at, we worked together in a couple of companies and now he is, um, he is uh, a CTO of a, uh, of a real estate uh, company. Chris, are you there? I am, can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. Okay, nice to meet you all. Thanks for having me. Um, as Dick said, I've, I've known him for quite some time now, um, you know, in, in prior, a prior life and in our, our current journey here at YLOPO. Um, I'm the founding CTO and now also the COO of YLOPO. We've got about 150 employees worldwide across seven countries and uh, 10 time zones. Um, so we've, we, we already were used to having a distributed workforce um, before COVID, which helped us um, in terms of managing our day-to-day -day collaboration and, and our tasks and, and making sure that we are all on the same page. Um, YLOPO is a digital marketing automation platform. We offer it as a service to the real estate uh, industry. So. Our clients are, are the uh, real estate brokerages and mortgage lenders, two separate sides of the business, the business. And we essentially offer digital marketing services to them. So we charge them a technology SaaS fee to use our platform. And then we also uh, have a pass through media expense that we spend on behalf of them to, to place ads. And we've built a technology to, to help them generate engagement on their their listings um, so that they can they can you know promote themselves as realtors and mortgage lenders um, through our technology we have a lot of machine learning uh, based or ai based bid optimization for our ads and we've also built a a, a chat bot to help nurture the the leads that wind up on any of our 2000 websites and uh, the hope is that we can prompt them to hopefully engage with the realtor when they're ready to buy a home. So that's why Lopo. We've been around for, for five years. Um, we've experienced hyper growth in 2019 where we almost tripled our revenue. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a fun journey so far. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Chris. And, and people are wondering, what do you do with all your spare time? No, <laughs> I'm sure you don't have much. Um, I call CPR and make them work harder. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, 
Well, so what we'll do is, um, I was hoping to have Hardeep here as well, but as they say, if he has a production issue, of course, that always takes a priority. But um, what, we'll, what we'll do is then, uh, my focus will be on Chris. And um, so we'll, uh, you know, there's some questions that we've kind of generated, and I thought we posed that in order to fill out the, the webinar. And um, the first question I have is, how long have you been live on your current ERP application, and what is that application? So we went live on NetSuite in March of 2017, so about three years. Um, it's been great so far. We came off of QuickBooks. Um, I like to forget about those days. So uh, we're happy to be on NetSuite. And we're, we're actually fortunate that we did go into NetSuite when we did because you know, we, uh, if you've heard the term pivot in the startup world, we pivoted quite a bit around that time and, you know, went to a pricing, a, a pricing model that is probably the most complex pricing model you've ever heard of. You know, we, we like to say that we like to torture ourselves. I think there's room for improvement here when it, when it comes to pricing our product, but it had, we had not been on that suite, uh, we would not have been able to bill our customers the way we do today in QuickBooks. And, and, and that's, that's obviously why you, you went there. And that's, that's the experience that you've had. And that kind of prompts to the next question is, you know, what, what, did, you, what did you think about your overall uh, migration experience and how did working with a partner assist you in that, uh, in that experience? Well, um, it's a loaded question, Dick. But, yeah, I know it is. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it it went relatively smooth. You know, um, I think a lot of the uh, let me back up a step. Obviously, the reason we went to NetSuite was because of its capabilities. We all know that they have a large install base, and uh, it's 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 very easy to extend and customize for your needs. You know, based on what we needed, there was no. Uh, package that um, or ERP package that worked um, that worked for us out of the box so we knew we had to do customization and after researching you know the capabilities of NetSuite what they had in their marketplace the amount of, of, of uh, vendors and partners that that uh, know NetSuite um, you know it, it, would, it, it was the right choice for us um, in terms of the, the, the migration to NetSuite you know, from a technical standpoint, it was relatively easy. Um, you know, we, we worked very closely with CTR. Um, I learned from past mistakes in prior life, uh, in a prior life. So we were able to, and CTR did help me with that prior life. So we, we've been able to kind of recall some of those mistakes and laugh about them, but make sure that we didn't make those mistakes again in NetSuite. Um, I think that the hardest part for us uh, going to NetSuite was, uh, you know, obviously we, we were running a, a uh, we had a very controlled usage of QuickBooks with one person handling that. So, you know, we, we had to evangelize it. Okay, we're moving to NetSuite, we're opening up NetSuite to multiple employees and, and you know, having to go through that process, the, you know, to evangelize the way that we would be now using our new accounting system was was one thing. And then two, also getting employees used to the new way of doing things, um, the way you should be doing things when you are a growing company. You know, so we, we kind of, you know, my, my verbiage here in the company is we have to grow up. Um, and, and we had to create a lot of those processes on the human side uh, to accommodate for this migration to NetSuite. You know, another reason we went to NetSuite is that we, you know, we, we were going through another round of funding and it's easier to click the button and say, here's our, here is our P&L and balance sheet from NetSuite, as opposed to exporting data from QuickBooks into Excel the way they want to see it. Because obviously, you know, um, there's room for error um, or adjusting when you do that in a spreadsheet. So. That was another reason we, we did go to NetSuite. So, so really, it, it sounds like you took advantage of NetSuite's best practice, you know, to, to, to shape your company. And the nice thing being a relatively new company, you were able to do that uh, 
fairly easily. I mean, it helps that you had a good understanding of not only the IT side, but the business application side. And you had workers who were a little bit more flexible in meeting, in meeting that requirement. Yeah, yeah I, I'd say so. In terms of best practice, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys be the judge of that. <laughs> um, you know, we, we did double our, our, our workforce in 2019. And, and so our usage of NetSuite expanded and that was very easy. It was basically just adding users getting people trained on our processes and making sure that we had the right roles in place for their, the way that they needed to use it. That's great. So yeah, that, that kind of, that kind of answers my other question that I had for you is what gains in efficiency did your, did your team realize as a result of adopting the cloud technology? And that's kind of what you were saying is just an ease of, of, of scalability. Yeah, and I, I don't know if, if it's okay to relate this to a prior life. You know, we, we had a large Oracle EBS footprint in a prior life, and um, we had a lot of customer service agents that were using our, you know, our on-prem applications, ERP applications. And um, I think you, I think I heard you mention DR or whatever um, earlier. That's recovery, and, and it reminded me of our, you know, kind of DR um, strategy when we were back then, uh, you know, going through it, creating it. And, and one of the big difficulties that we had was, you know, in the event of a disaster and people cannot work in the office, how do we, how, you know, uh, how do we achieve business continuity? And we literally had in our plan driving up a trailer into a parking lot with internet connectivity and rolling out desktops, you know, because these users had hard phones and desktops, right? So we, we, we had to, we had a standby vendor for soft phone technology. We had to have a vendor that you could basically call on to bring desktops. And then we had a vendor that would roll out a trailer to house these customer service agents, you know, in the event we couldn't use our office. And you know, I, I don't know if there's a lot of companies that are still in that situation. I, I presume so. Um, but where we are now, you know, when we made the, when, when COVID hit, you know, we really didn't have any disruption in service. You know, um, all our employees have laptops. We have soft phone technology. Um, our, you know, any of our, our reps that need to have access to billing just go right into NetSuite. And, you know, we, we're, we're an all cloud company at this point. And the only on-prem technology that we have is the hardware to, to basically service our, our network infrastructure. And there's no way that I would go back to the prior life. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's just much easier to be functioning this way. In fact, I don't know if any of you read that article this morning um, on an in Inc. magazine. Um, it was Bill Gates making a statement about how he knew that this had to be the way of the future. And in fact, if for companies to attract top talent, which has been a challenge for us, right? We compete with Google and Facebook for you know, our, our engineering resources. Um, we, we have to be flexible in allowing people to work from home from the get-go. And so technologies like NetSuite, you know, like Zendesk, what we use for support, you know, it makes that very easy. Um, so I, I think I answered your question. Hopefully I did, Dick. Yes, you did. Yep. Okay. Yes, you did. And, and again, that, that there's kind of a series of questions we had on, uh, on how you know how COVID nineteen has has impacted companies, and and you you know you kind of talked about that your your ease of rolling out since you already had a lot of uh, remote workers certainly that that uh, that bettered you to to have that capability. But still, you know what we've been finding is if you have a laptop, and you know if you're a uh, information technologist, if you're really doing transactions and Certainly, if you work in a manufacturing environment where you have to have a machine available, it, it, it's not quite as easy. But if you're basically transacting, it certainly makes uh, being in a cloud environment like NetSuite 
certainly makes your life easier and you can scale just by the just providing a laptop and accessibility and if the person has Wi-Fi or internet access at home uh, or any location they can pretty much do that as far as uh, have you met any encountered any problems that you know with operating in the cloud that uh, you've had to resolve and um, and how have you resolved those problems uh, <laughs> well you know I keep thinking about the human element right um, but that's uh, you know we can get to that that later I, I guess you know some of the challenges, just because I, I, I'm, I'm more technical um, by trade, is you know it took some time to get used to not having the database right there for me to just query. Right, you have to get used to going to the right, you know, channels or processes to get the information that you need. I can't just like whip up an editor and write my queries on the fly. Yeah. Um, but I understand why. Right, you know I. Uh, the more developers I have who would have access to the database in that way would make me more nervous. So I totally get it. Um, so, I, you know, I think it, it just takes getting used to, um, you know, not having that data, you know, accessible in the way that I've been used to with on-prem technology. Um, but certainly those, the, the, the benefits outweigh those those challenges because we still do have access to the data. In fact, you know, we, we did just buy the Suite Analytics Connect um, feature or module of NetSuite. So that's the next project that we're going to tackle. We're looking forward to that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure you still, you know, it's, it's still a path, still a path forward. You're always finding um, new, every time you find some, you know, find new information or a new product comes out or a new sub product comes out, you find a need for it eventually and then you find a way to apply that to, to your business. So that really doesn't change from an on-premise. It's just the ease in which you can add applications, the ease in which you know, all of that works. And because you're still relatively standard, standardized uh, compared to where you were before, um, it, it does make that migration up easier uh, you mentioned like Suite Analytics and all. The the implementation the implementation of that and the use of it is is made to be much easier. I would think for you. I know you're the CTO, so you can do much more technical things than I. But also introducing those new functionalities to your users certainly is easier with a product like NetSuite. I would think. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I, I would say. Um, one of the things that that uh, you, you need to think about is choosing your vendors um, wisely, you know, and I think that probably sounds like common sense for people on this call and this webinar. But I will share with you guys that, you know, um, very recently we had another vendor who I won't name have an outage where they had lost some of our data. And, uh, you know, fortunately we had that data uh, in some of our other systems. So we're able to recover that data on our own. You know, but you wanna trust in your vendor that your, you know, your cloud technology vendor that your data is safe. And so it's making me take another look at the way that we evaluate some of the SaaS providers that we use in addition to the processes that we have internally for critical data. Fortunately, we do have that data. But like I said, you want to trust the vendors that you use. And you know, being an Oracle customer for over 20 years, um, you know, I, NetSuite's on the, the not, not really on the top of the list for where I have to worry. You know, Oracle's been known for her. Um, backup and recovery, performance, and all of that. So, you know, um, we don't have to worry about those things with NetSuite. That's what that's what you want to hear. Um, that's great. And and as far as um, your users, um, 
do, do they, I mean, do you use managed services now? I mean, I know, you, you know, you're very technical yourself, but there's only so much of you. And so, you know, when you, when you put a system in like NetSuite, and, and it is relatively easy to implement and relatively easy to, to uh, negotiate through, uh, is how important is, is a managed service uh, relationship with, 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 the, with your vendor? Well, for, for us, it's, it's very important because most, if not all of my technical resources are devoted to engineering our product. So, you know, we, we kind of have this, we have this split, right? We've got, you know, the technology slash engineering resources and they're, they're, they are who I rely on to build our product that we sell to our customer. Then we've got the IT side where we have all of these SaaS, you know, um, you know, SaaS applications, including NetSuite. We don't have dedicated resources here, um, nor does it make sense for us to, to have full-time resources for some of these applications. So we, um, we rely on CTR heavily to support us. Um, and you guys have been there through some of the, uh, you know, some of the, the tough times. I say tough when we're trying to accomplish six months worth of work in three months. And, um, you know, because that's kind of the, the speed that we like to move in, you know, all companies do. Um, and because we don't really have a full-time NetSuite, you know, pool of resources here, we, we the only choice we have is to rely on our partners. And, and I think that that's the case. I, I just, I'm always, I always like to make sure that anybody who's looking at an ERP package, especially a SaaS, you know, understands that, you know, it, it's, it's not a plug. It is a plug and play, but it's not, you know, there's still, there's still a lot of support uh, that goes into managing the system. Um, and the more you can, um, decentralize that, the better off it is for people, especially with, with someone like yourself, because you have so many locations that you're supporting, I mean, both both United States and offshore. So it's, it's nice to have somebody that can also um, support that same uh, location basis. Um, so that's great. Um, you know, I, I've really covered most of my, you, you've been really great and you've actually read ahead on most of my questions. So you've actually been great on uh, answering answering my questions but I was wondering if you had any other any other thing you wanted to comment on before we opened it up to, to the general population yeah I would just say that you know and probably to the audience here I think they fully understand you know cloud applications uh, to the extent of you know how we can benefit from them being in the cloud at, at this point you know um, if not I think <laughs> There's a lot of documentation on why. I think uh, it's very easy to forget about the human element. And, and even though we were a distributed, we were a distributed workforce going into COVID, you know, um, and I make it sound pretty, you know, we, we had our share of challenges, you know. Um, it, it's, it's hard to collaborate at the same level when you're not in the office together. And we, I found that we've had to adjust the way that we even talk to each other on Zoom, for example. You know, um, you, know you, you, you have to ask questions in a different way to solicit that kind of engagement. It's very easy to be distracted when you're at home. You know, on top of that, we've, we've seen, you know, explosive usage on our communication tools. We use Slack here. And what, what, happened early on is we had haphazard chat rooms and channels being created. And so we had to implement a standard way of communicating and making sure that we had to break down potential silos within Slack. You know, I know this sounds kind of funny pre COVID, you know, I would have laughed at all of this probably, um, but we had to go through it. And in the end, I think, you know, we've been able to optimize the way that we work in such a way that, you know, we really, probably don't have to really come to the office when COVID's over. You know, we, it's going to be a while for that, we think. Um, we, we do have an office in Phoenix that in, in Arizona, they've opened up everything, but we've, 
uh, instructed our employees to stay home just so that we can make sure that they're safe. And uh, we're going to continue to do that and, um, and not have to worry about any kind of degraded service or disruption of, of service or quality of service. And, so, and that's so true because you see, you, you know, the large companies that they've got, you know, that 40, 50, 60,000 employees, and they used to have, you know, 400 offices across the United States. And now they're saying, well, maybe we'll get rid of some of those offices because we really don't need, we don't need to have uh, brick and mortar offices anymore because people are actually more comfortable being remote. And if the software that you offered to them, I mean, you've mentioned a lot of like softwares and for you, it's just throwing out like Slag and all that. But you know, it, it's just because you're so, uh, you're so, you're so good at offering SAP, SAP's product or cloud product that means nothing. But with, without those, because we use Team and we use a lot of uh, software as well, and it's just so nice to have uh, access to all of that. It is, it is true. You have to get, you know, you don't see, I'm a, I'm a guy who likes to be in the office. I like the physical interaction, but I have gotten used to doing more with video chatting and doing more with all that. So you can still see some of the physical uh, physical uh, aspects, but I, I, you know, but I have noticed over the last three and a half months that it has become easier and easier to work remotely. You know, we, we have, I have built the rapport with my colleagues and with my clients that I know how they say things now means, means more than what they say sometimes. So no, I, I agree with you. It, it, it is, it has been a challenge, but I think it's one that we're all getting used to. But no, I mean, th thanks for your input, Chris. And what I wanted to do just to make sure that it, if we do have questions that they're being addressed is that I thought we would open this up and I know Dave is, is monitoring questions. So if you don't mind, I'll ask Dave um, to read out some of the questions he might have. Dave? Yeah, thanks for, thanks for passing that over. And, and Chris, great job going along the way. You actually uh, answered quite a few of the questions that <laughs> popped up. Um, so maybe we're, we're in sync here, which is good. Um, one question that did come up, and I think you addressed this a little bit earlier when you talked about investors and, and how that process was made easier in that second round of funding, but it's how is, how is the new application, which I'll add in this case is NetSuite, how has that streamlined or made that process easier um, for, for investors? Well, I think, you know, it, it, as an investor myself and, and seeing other companies, you know, you want to, uh, that are raising money, you want to make sure that they are on technology that is not only highly available, but it's trustworthy. And you know, NetSuite's got a huge install base. So you know that, you know, with NetSuite's success with other companies, you can trust that, you know, if assuming, you know, it's been implemented the right way, that you can trust the information that you can get out of NetSuite. You know, so it, it's actually a good thing to tell an investor, hey, we're running our ERP on NetSuite. It's actually one of the things I like to say, you know, and, and, and oh, oh, it's, it's frequent when someone kind of sits back and they say, wow, you're, you know, you're on NetSuite. But yeah, you know, we had made the decision early on because what we wanted to avoid was having to stop and go every single time that we had to push the envelope on, you know, the financials or the way that we bill our customers, you know. So for us, it was a way that we were, you know, not only to gain the trust of the investors, but to also, you know, show that we've kind of laid laid down the foundation or paved the way for growth. And we certainly don't want ERP to be an excuse for, or a reason why we're not growing. Excellent, thank you. Um, another one just came in here. Are you able to do detailed reporting from NetSuite or is there a downstream application that you use for that? Good question. Um, yes, we're able to do, so we've functioned over the last three years reporting out of, purely out of NetSuite. Um, and I'm talking about financials and, and uh, in, you know, our billing uh, reporting. Uh, is there a lot more we can do? Uh, absolutely. You know, we, 
we already have a data warehouse for non NetSuite data. You know, we have a lot of marketing data, customer data, um, you know, uh, traffic related data. And so we have a, an existing data warehouse outside of NetSuite and we use Tableau on top of that to uh, have these nice visuals for our, our users. And uh, we, we, weren't, we weren't able to plug NetSuite into that. Um, more, it's more so on us because it just wasn't the priority. We were, we were doing okay with the reports that we had, but now that we're ready to do that, um, that's the reason why we purchased the Suite Analytics Connect module. And you know, I'm in particularly more excited about this project now because there's just so much information locked up in NetSuite that even our client services team, I mean, if you can imagine, I, I probably shouldn't say this, but whatever, I'll say it here, I'll be transparent. Um, when a customer calls our client services department, for the most part, you know, that, that agent, they, they know what, um, what level that customer, our, our subscriptions have, have different levels. So they know what level that customer is on, but they don't have any access to the billing details, you know, because I, I don't have all of the, our client services in NetSuite. Um, we are going to, we're going to be able to achieve that over the next you know, month or two with Suite Analytics Connect. We're going to just pull that data right out of NetSuite, drop it into our Tableau reporting, which is what our users are used to, and uh, and 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 we'll be able to tailor that data to the way that they uh, to the way that they want to see it. You know, different functional groups within our company want to see the same data in different ways, and we can easily do that with our data warehouse technology. You know. I hope I answered that question. I think you did, and I'll, and I'll monitor the chat to see if uh, we get an affirmative there, but I think so. Um, another one that came in is, is about extensions or customizations, and it says, what level of extensions or customizations are you able to do to address business process instead of changing the business process to fit NetSuite? <laughs> I, I could probably talk for hours about this. Um, <laughs> You know, is that a question you guys want to take, or do you want do you want me to answer that? I mean, since you guys have have worked on a lot of the customizations that we have, um, uh, why, why don't I, you let's start it. Yeah, let's start with you, and we can interject maybe and add, add certain details, but not all of them, right? <laughs> we don't want to give away the secret sauce. Well, you know, I, I think it would help to describe, you know, how complex our billing is. You know. I won't get into the details, but what I will say is that our customers prepay for their media expense for one. And on top of that, um, you know, with, with digital marketing, you can never exactly nail how much you, you want to spend with all of the ad platform. So it's a constantly moving target. And when your customers have to prepay and you have to reconcile that or true it up before the next billing cycle, it, it's very painful. On top of that, we allow our customers to split their bill. So a realtor could split their bill with one or two other colleagues. And you know, for, for those of you who've done anything in billing or order management, that is, <laughs> This is very hard to do. So um, CTR has been working on a serious customization for us, all NetSuite best practice um, to allow us to be able to, to do this very easily. You know, right now there's parts of it that are automated, parts of it are manual, but by the time we're done with this next project, uh, billing will be a lot easier and in terms of business process, you know, a lot of the manual stuff will go away. And I'm very much looking forward to that because it will reduce our errors drastically. And that's kind of what we were talking about, Chris, is that, you know, those things that you can adapt to with NetSuite's best practice says to do it this way, and, it, and it's not significant to you to do it another way, then of course you would do it. You know, why not? But 
those things that you consider your core competency, which is obviously billing is always near and dear to, I'm an accountant, so billing is always near and dear to every accountant that you want to be able to uh, reflect, you know, how you do business and how you do that rather than say, okay, well, this is how NetSuite does it. No, this is how I want to do it. And I think that that's really where the question was, is, is NetSuite flexible enough to support those times that you, you have a core competency that you want to be able to follow rather than changing your core competency to reflect what NetSuite can provide. And I think that that's what you said is you, you picked and chose. So those things you could switch because you're coming from, you know, a, a small system and you know, it, it didn't, it didn't matter to you sometimes. So you took NetSuite's best practice, but in this one here, you knew what you wanted and you knew how complex it was. And so you, you, you adopted that, you said, no, this is the customization that we have to have, and this is what we're willing to spend on to, to make it work. So I think you, you picked and chose what you needed, but you did say if, if NetSuite has had a good best practice, you did ad adopt that best practice and, and switched your, your internal systems to reflect that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I want to add to that, that you know, the way we built today wasn't exactly what, how we were billing when we chose NetSuite. You know, and and uh, one of the things that I was looking for is is a an ERP solution that had a lot of partners, potential partners to work with. Not that I would ever consider another one. Okay, <laughs> you know, but you know, two things that were important. Like, how large is the install base, right? How and, and you know, I like to tri triangulate with my peers. So 